Does a War Thunder, the esteemed flight simulator game, yup, that game, prepare you for real aircraft? That was the question facing me a while ago, very unexpectedly, I might add, uh, when I got the opportunity to fly in a Stearman Trainer biplane from the Second World War. Now, it's supposed to be more of a sightseeing tour of this area in West Virginia we were at, but a Stearman has two sets of controls, one in the front and one in the back. And after talking with the instructor, never mentioning that I've flown sims, but certainly being able to speak the jargon and understand the physics of what he was explaining, he decided to give me a shot at flying about 20 minutes in. And by the end of this, you'll see me pilot this 90-year-old aircraft in, uh, well, unexpected ways. Enjoy. So he gave me control of the plane to kind of look at what I wanted to look at. I put it into a bank. Two things happen when you're in a bank, right? You're not creating as much lift, so you're going to drop elevation just a, a tiny bit. And also, you're going to keep in that turn, right? You're going to keep moving. So whatever you want to look at, you're kind of going to circle it just, just a little bit until you bank over. But then you can't really see if you were looking to your right side. you got to bank left. You can't really see it anymore unless you go all the way around. So what I did, which I think impressed him enough to, to make him realize that I have some experience with things like this, is flying straight, going to a bank. I'm looking down to the right side at the gorge. And with the rudder, which he hadn't really told me to touch yet, but I, I did anyway, um, I kicked it left. So now we're banked right, the rudder up like this. That offsets the elevation loss and actually keeps it so you can fly straight instead of just pulling the elevator back and staying in that turn. So you're, you're still in a turn, but it's a lot more gradual and you're essentially flying straight while keeping the elevation because your rudder sort of acts as an elevator when you're in the bank. And we were able to fly along the gorge, looking straight down to our right side, pretty much the whole way with me just using the rudder and kicking it. Mind you, this is also a, a cable aircraft. So much so that like if you were to drop a sweatshirt down below, there have been issues prior where a sweatshirt or a piece of clothing gets stuck on the cables that are running under your butt and the plane crashes because you can't control it. One thing that I very much learned was that in a cable aircraft, the speed, matters a lot when it comes to how the aircraft not only handles but how much force you physically have to put into the plane in order to get it to do what you want it to do and that'll come up in the next section which he instructed me that he would like to try to do a barrel roll with myself in control so we went through this once or twice with him in control as you can see here fucking awesome fucking awesome open cockpit plane Looking straight down, nothing over top of you, a few thousand feet in the air, prime. Okay, this was so prime in fact, sorry, I'm, I'm editing right now, that I don't think you can fully experience this without listening to the sound, so just take a second, listen to this absolute ear candy, oh my gosh. Now what we were doing to pull off this maneuver was climbing, diving kind of gradually, getting enough speed to be able to pull up and do the barrel roll while we were climbing very gradually, right? Because you wanted some speed and you wanted to be able to roll off the top of it and uh, come in well. He was telling me to keep going. I was not 100% sure what he meant by that, right? Now, it can be assumed, and it was rightly assumed at the time, sort of, that what he meant was to keep in the turn. Basically, once you commit, don't stop. Just go. The first time I did it, I went way too slow. Now, the second time he showed me how to do it, he had me keep my hands on the controls. Um, he's in full control. He's the one moving it, but I'm just kind of shadowing his movements. Because when his set of controls moves, mine does as well. So... I knew what I needed to do, I didn't know the force that I needed to do it at. The main difference between this aircraft and flying any simulator I've ever been in is that on a joystick, right, this is the flight control that I use, this to there 
is all the range of motion you have. That is two to three, three to four inches, somewhere around there. As some might say, not enough for the whole experience. And that is very much true when it comes to the flight because the stick that you have in this World War II trainer plane is like, you can't even see my hands, right? It's longer than this. It goes from the floor up to about here, which is a good, well, I don't know, three and a half, four feet long. It's a giant baseball bat. It's the reason why in playing games like War Thunder, the Spitfire in particular is what comes to mind, is so fucking sensitive because you're doing a movement that would be a two foot lateral movement in about that much. It's so sensitive, right? So that exact same thing applies to the Stearman, but backwards. So my normal, oh, let's do this, let's go into a soft bank, is actually let's do this and go into a soft bank. And you're fighting the wind resistance because it's a cable aircraft. So the faster you're going, aka in a dive, more air resistance is going over the surfaces. You're going to need more force in order to do what you want to do. Now, I, I forget which number it was, but it was either the second or third time I experienced negative G's. Negative G's while you're upside down in an open cockpit plane a few thousand feet over a gorge. That's a fun story, right? What happened was, it's in my right hand, the stick is. Pulled back. We're going up now after the dive. We have the speed. I'm going to go commit. He just told me to commit. He told me to keep going. I go right. He puts his hands up out of the cockpit. Great picture. I love that fucking picture. But I fucked up. And you'll see here. I go right with the stick. It's not going as fast as I want it to. I take my left hand and I put it on top. And I think that my hand is pushing straight laterally with this one. It was not. My left hand came in and instead of pushing with this one, it pushed forward. Pushing forward when you're upside down induces negative G. It's like pulling up when you're right side up, except that creates normal G because your butt is pushed into the seat at that point. When you're upside down and that happens, your butt's pushed out of the seat. The plane wants to eject you. That's what happens. The plane wanted to kick us out, which you can see by his goggles. His hands are up, and if you look very closely, his goggles want to fly off, and he catches them. He caught them. That is awesome. First off, that's awesome. This is awesome. My performance, not, not so great, but my dude, first time in a plane. This is like the first 20 minutes. And if you're saying, oh, this sounds unsafe, whatever, he, he's learning how to be a, a genuine instructor and he has his own set of controls. I mean, he took over at this point. I fucked up. His hands come down. He takes control. It's fine. We were safe. That plane is made to have idiot newbies inside of the cockpit. That That's its entire design and it's been doing it for what 80 90 years now but you know what that experience did it taught me i fucking learned from almost dying because i didn't want to repeat it again i didn't want to do that again i was also a little you know slightly embarrassed a little bit like uh okay i gotta get it this time and i did it twice i did it twice more it was amazing it was so much fun that was awesome we uh i'll show you a few pictures of the gorge right now here's some of the bridge Flew through more clouds. We actually did a bow roll around some clouds. Oh, oh, dude, the... Oh, excuse me. The the fighter pilot from the sim games that I fly just really came out. And it was like it was like you were tracking another plane, but it's a cloud and you're rolling over. It's like the rolled scissors. Dude, I'm never going to forget that. that. That was awesome. I would not recommend... I cannot recommend these guys enough. It was... Can you see it? Is it focused? It's probably not focused. Everything... That is on here is in the description highly highly recommend and we also finished up with a few acrobatics it wasn't super long uh, we were kind of running out of time because he had fun teaching me and wanted me to learn and i took a few extra minutes i don't think he specifically planned for but we did some pulled some g's it was probably didn't go more than three or four to be honest but you did feel it you felt it in your face and that first one where you're going for the dive hard turn and you're just kind of stalled out at the top whoo that was a lot more G's than I thought it was going to be. I, I He said prepare. It, it's like um, like the fighter pilot videos with, where they're in actual jets where you actually need to prepare. Um, I was like, ah, this is a biplane. I'm not going to prepare. Fuck that. I needed to just a little bit. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't much, but you could feel it come in for like a split second. 
and uh, your face and neck are just locked in, locked in place. And you stall out at the top. The whole world is beneath you. It just feels like you're falling straight down. It was, it was so cool. It was so cool. And I'm a bitch when it comes to like amusement park rides and droppers and all that stuff. I could not get enough of this. I really couldn't. I would do that again in a heartbeat. And I was very flattered when we ended up landing. He was talking with uh, some of the people that were there, including like my dad, who was just watching, right? Apparently, he, teaching me how to go upside down was something he had never done with anybody before. He never felt comfortable doing that with anyone prior to myself. And I was also the first person who had never touched an aircraft. I was the first person that he let take any type of control. And he said that he's had people who have had their pilot's license, that he did not feel comfortable taking them upside down. But I guess because I was a blank slate, because I had a good touch with the aircraft, I have a very good touch with vehicles. My job is driving heavy machinery half the time. He felt comfortable, and I felt honored, because that was fucking awesome. That was so cool. Now, I wouldn't necessarily say to going to that place is going to guarantee you an experience like that. Um, but what I will say is that to all the people who have commented in my videos, simulators do prepare you for real planes. The skills transfer. The skills transfer very well. And I was able to know everything. Not everything, obviously. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But I was able to know enough to feel comfortable to do that. But that was an amazing experience that I'm never going to forget. So thank you. I really wanted to share with you guys. Adios.